This is the 2006 BC FRQ number six. So let's do this. So they give us um, two series, one for F and one for G. And uh, what does it say? For all real numbers X for which the series converge, these are the series, find the interval convergence for the power series for F. So we're going to do the ratio test. So R is going to be the limit as N goes to infinity. So what I'm going to do is add 1 to all these Ns. And that will give me negative 1 is absolute to the N plus 1, N plus 1, X to the N plus 1, all over N plus 2. Because you do N plus 1 there and add one more, you get N plus 2. Now you divide it by this. But to do that, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we get n plus 1, negative 1 to the n, you get an n there, and an x to the n. All right, let's start canceling some things here. You have n of them there. You have one extra x on top. So when those cancel, you're going to be left with an n. And then since we're doing absolute value, we don't need these negatives. They become insignificant. And then we get this. Whoops, I made a mistake. This is x, not n. I was like, where'd my x go? So we're going to have the x there. And 2n plus 1s. I'm going to multiply that out. Don't have to, but I'm going to. In the bottom, we're going to get n squared plus 2n. Now, remember what the variable is. What your con x is a constant. I'll remind you again why. If you want f of 1, all these x's will be 1, and they're constant. So x will be the constant. What's changing? n changes. As you go term by term, your n keeps increasing by 1. So your n is changing. And we see here n's going to infinity. So I'm going to take the x out and take the limit of the rest. But this limit's 1. So we have absolute value of x. Um, you could do L'Hopital's, or you can divide everything by n squared. But that's going to be 1. So r is absolute value of x. Now, when what does a ratio test tell us? If our r is less than 1, it converges. So we would say this thing converges when this is true. And you can write it like this. No absolute value when you get the two inequalities going on. So that'll be when this thing converges. This is not the interval of convergence, though. It, we just know it converges between negative 1 and 1. But now we have to test the endpoints to see what happens at the end to get our interval of convergence. So we're going to let x be negative 1. That's our left endpoint. And if you put negative 1 right here, we're going to get this series. And we're going to have n, negative 1 to the n, over n plus 1. Why is this significant? We'll show you why. Um, these two can be under the same n, but a negative 1, negative 1 is positive 1, so they're going to disappear, actually. And when you look at this, I'll explain, using that divergence test, the limit of these terms approach 1. And according to the divergence or the nth term test, if those terms do not approach 0, then this series has to di diverge. So I'll put because because therefore it diverges. Then we're going to test the other endpoint. 
We're going to test x equals 1. Wow, I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room. But we'll do this also. Down here, if I have room. And you're going to see we're going to get a similar result. The only difference for this one, I'm going to have a positive one here on the second one. Whoops, positive one. I say positive, I put a negative. Doofus. And clearly that just doesn't matter. So we do have an alternating series. Does this alternating series converge? Now, the same reason for the previous one, this will also diverge. If you take the limit of this, it does not approach zero. And it has to approach zero to converge, to have a chance to converge according to the divergence test. So I'm not gonna write it down because I'm running out of room, but for the same reason it diverges, um, some might say, hey, and this is an alternating series, but an alternating series, the terms must decrease in magnitude to zero. This does not decrease in magnitude to zero, approaches one. And the divergence test says that diverges. So over here in my little tiny spot, therefore, the interval of convergence will be the same as what we found earlier. It's negative one to one. Now we've tested the endpoints, and we know the endpoints do not converge. All right. They want us to find y prime and y double prime of zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Wow. I wish I had. Okay. Let's do it this way. I'm going to find y first, which is f of x minus g of x. And if I can go up here, so minus is going to take a while because I have to scroll up. And now I'll just, I have it somewhere else here. I will cheat and read it off another screen. So it's going to be minus x over 2 plus 2x squared over 3 minus 3x cubed over 4 plus dot, dot, dot. And then I'm going to subtract g, which is given above. 1 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 4 factorial minus x cubed over 6 plus dot, dot, dot. Now, watch what happens. I distribute that, I get negative 1. And then what's minus x squared minus a negative x squared? That's plus x squared. That's going to be 0. So there's going to be nothing there for the x squared x term, x to the first. This is 2 thirds minus, ooh, what's 4 factorial? 2 times 3 is 24. Wow, 2 thirds, okay, I have to, yeah, I'm not smart enough to do this. 2 thirds minus 1 over 24, x squared. And I'm going to do one more term. I'll do the x cubes. It's going to be plus negative 3 fourths plus 1. Is that 6 factorial? Yeah. That's 6 factorial. X cubed. But it's not going to matter, and I'll show you why. Plus dot, dot, dot. Now, here is the secret. I know the solution in the scoring guidelines is different, like what they give you. Um, my brain just went blank, what they give you on the College Board website, but this is the way I want you to do it, or else there's a lot more work and some explaining to do. But notice, there is no x, x term, because it was 0x to the first, so we didn't write it. Now, remember how series are formed. You're going to take at the center and find the point at the center. Then you take the derivative, and you do x. Then the second derivative, x squared, I don't know why I'm parenthesizing that, over 2 factorial, plus the third derivative, x cubed over 3 factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. Now, you don't have to write that down. I'm doing that to show you something. If we want, oh, this should be zeros. Okay, I totally messed this up. And we could be done so much faster, but Rashida's messing up. 
it's y prime is 0 times x plus y double prime is 0 x squared over 2 factorial plus y triple prime is 0 x cubed over 3 factorial. And that should not be foreign to any of you. That's how we build a Taylor series. Okay, that's just the scratch form. Now, comparing this to that. So therefore, 0x must equal y prime of 0x. Because this is how to create the x to the first power term. And in our series we just found, it's 0. So clearly, y prime of 0 is 0. So the first derivative is 0. We're going to do the same thing with the second derivative. So therefore, this term here is going to equal that term. Let's do this. 2 thirds minus 1 24th x squared must equal the second derivative of 0 x squared over 2 factorial. Now we can get rid of the x squareds, multiply both sides by 2 factorial. So we end up with this. y double prime at 0 will be 2 thirds minus 1 over 24 times 2 factorial. And that's positive. Because 1 24 is tiny. 2 thirds minus that is positive. So I'm going to say that's greater than 0. And that equals 0. So this is the second derivative test for relative max and relative min. I would say y, I'm pretty sure it was y the function was asking. Yeah. So y has a what? Relative max or min. Okay, second derivative is positive, making concave up. And the first derivative is 0, so making relative min. So it has a rel min at x equals 0. Why? Because y prime at 0 is 0. And y double prime of 0 is positive. Done with the proof. All right, that's it. That's it. Now, let me double check something here. Making sure this comes out right. So if we make this a common denominator, this will be 16 24ths. Subtract 1, it'll be 15 24ths times 2, 15 twelfths. My answer is not matching up with, or is it? Well, actually, I think it is. Yeah, it actually matches with what they got. So I'm a happy camper. Bye-bye.